10D, receive staff report on changes to the operation of the youth sports programs during fiscal year 2010-11. Thank you. This, the purpose of this item is to provide information to the City Council <coughs> regarding a restructuring of the community's after-school sports programs. This new collaborative with the San Bruno Park School District will have benefits to the City, the District, and will provide a much higher level of service to the public. Representatives from the District approached City staff last year with a request for City staff to take over the operation of the after-school sports programs at Parkside Intermediate School. Um, under a city's operation, the students will still be competing against other middle schools in the um, North Coast or North County Recreation League um, in sports such as basketball, volleyball, flag football, track, um, cross country, etc. The benefits, though, of a city operation will be increased participation as we will allow all registered participants to be placed on teams. Currently, the school has a finite number of spaces they can open due to, due to mainly coaching um, um, availability. And this would be more consistent with the other schools, with our neighboring cities that, that our students would be competing against, where all students have an opportunity to be placed onto a team. Um, another benefit we believe to the program is similar, again, to our neighboring cities, sixth graders would be competing against the other schools. Um, as sixth grade in San Bruno is still part of the elementary school, we are the only sixth grade, we only city, city where sixth graders are not competing um, against other schools. And we think this will be new and exciting for them and we again expect um, increased participation. Preliminary discussions with the school administrators led to the list of responsibilities that is in your packet. Um, but two that I do want to point out um, that were among the items that were discussed, that the city's operation would be on a year-to-year -year basis and the city could opt out and turn the operation back over to the district at any point or more at, any, at the end of any school year. And that no city general funds would be um, needed to subsidize the program at any point. So a lot of the items that are in the packet there that the, sc that the school is still responsible for are designed to make sure that, that the city um, would not have to subsidize the after school sports program. With the changes to the middle school program, one of the things that it opens up is the elementary school program. We will now be having it as second through fifth graders rather than third through sixth graders. Um, there's a lot of second graders that want to participate in the program. They tried to sign up for it, and we have not um, allowed them to at this point. What we would be doing next year is having second and third graders in an instructional league. It would be more akin to a recreation class than a competitive program. We know that they're already competing. Um, in, in soccer, as an example, and they're starting to do basketball or, or, or baseball activities as t-ball and those types of things. But it's really the first time that second and third graders are working with basketball, with, with flag football, um, with volleyball. So those would be done as a class more than an, as a competitive league. The fourth and fifth graders, they would be, getting, be having an, an introduction to a competitive program. Similar to the program that was done by the department in past years, we would be having practices on district campuses rather than having um, somebody pick the children up and bring them to City Park for a one-hour practice. We think it would, be, it would be much more convenient to the parents um, or caregivers of the children to be able to leave them on campus in a healthy, safe, supervised um, setting um, until 4 p.m. rather than picking them up at 3 p.m., bringing them to City Park, waiting for an hour practice, and then taking them home. So again, we expect much more in the, ways of, in the way of participation under this structure. Another benefit of moving the practices to the elementary <coughs> school campuses is, as we discussed a few minutes ago, it would free up the gymnasium use so that some of those other groups can rent it out. And there we do get requests on an annual basis from St. Roberts, from Highlands, from some of the sports clubs that are looking for more gymnasium space. 
So we would be able to have the, the second through fifth grade programs on school campuses, making it more convenient for the parents. At the same time, it would open up the gym space so that we believe that we are looking at approximately $1,000 per week of new revenue during the peak season um, of the, the volleyball, basketball activities. This proposal was reviewed by a committee of the Parks and Recreation Commission, and it was discussed by a committee meeting of the city council um, school board members. And input has been put into this uh, proposal. And I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions of staff? We've got a couple questions. Um, so, so Parkside School will not be a representative. It will be San Bruno Youth Youth Program, Youth Youth League. It would be open to any any sixth through, through eighth grade student um, within San Bruno, and that's a little bit of a switch now. Right now, it's only open to right. Parkside students. If a student is homeschooled or they're attending a school that does not have an after-school sports program, we would allow them to compete here. Um, whether we call the team a Parkside, which is what we do, but we would have logos of both the city and the, the district on uniforms to indicate to, to parents and players that it is a partnership. There would be a financial <coughs> stake in the program from the district as well as, as from the city through the fees that we are collecting. Which begs a question, I mean, what, what, are the, what are the people from St. Robert say? Because I know they still belong to a league and we'll, they'll have the option of being within that league and also in this new San Bruno League. They would, the St. Robert students would be eligible to compete on the Parkside team. However, they are not allowed under PPSL rules to compete in both. If the student competes for St. Robert's and the league that they participate in is the PPSL, the PPSL rules are that they are not allowed to compete in any other outside activity, whether it's a city program or something such as nothing but hoops. So they would be restricted that way. If they wanted to participate in ours, they could, but then they would have to not compete for the school team. And my last question is that, so are you going to, uh, is, are these programs going to be uh, coached by volunteers uh, throughout the community? We will. Uh, much like, you know, uh, the, set, the, the baseball and softball leagues? We still will have some of the teachers coaching the program and, we, and the, the school will still be paying for teachers to be at the athletic directors to handle the registrations and, and um, um, alignment of teams. But we are open to, to parent coaches and we're needed as we do at the elementary school level now. Um, we do have some of the college students that are part-time staff that are learning how to coach and interested in athletics as a possible career goal. So they also would be eligible to coach for us. Yeah, I think it's great, great program. Anything else? This is just a staff report, not just, but a right. staff report, so there's no action this evening. Thank you very much, Randy.